Next, let's talk about the evaluation of recommended systems. Basically how to evaluate whether the recommended system is performing well or poorly. And let's say that we have this rating matrix where each row represents one user and each column represents one movie. Um, the rating is on a scale of one to five. But for example, this entry means that user one gives a rating of three to you to movie two. And usually we will withhold part of the data as the test data set and we'll pretend we don't know these ratings and we'll use the, the other ratings as training set. So basically we will use the training set to predict the unknown ratings here and we will evaluate how close the prediction can be to the ground truth ratings. And we can also have another choice of splitting the training test set. For example, we can for each user, we can select 20% of his or her ratings and put it into the test data set and put the remaining 80% into the training data set. And there are actually a lot of public data sets that we can use to evaluate the performance of recommended systems. For example, we can use um, data set that are called movie lens. And these are data set that contains a lot of ratings from quite a, quite a large number of users. And the ratings, they have different version of movie lens ranging from 100K ratings to 10 million ratings. And we can also have another data set, which is the Netflix data set that has 100 million ratings. And all the historic user ratings constitute the ground truth. And to evaluate the performance of recommended systems quantitatively, we need to have some evaluation metrics right, in order to measure the error rate. And one of the metrics is mean absolute error, or MAE, that computes the, basically computes the deviation between the predicted ratings and the actual ratings, as, as laid down by this equation here. We can see that we're actually using the absolute value here, and PI is the predicted ratings, R is the actual ratings. Another matrix we can use is the root mean square error, which, which is normally called RMSE. And this is very similar to MAE, but it actually places more emphasis on larger deviation. You can see that it has a quadratic form. So basically, it, the, this error actually goes up pretty quickly as the deviation goes up. And this is why we say that it places more emphasis on larger deviation. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say that we have um, these columns as the ratings, and this column is a corresponding predictive ratings. Then to calculate the MAE, we'll first take the difference, and actually it's the absolute difference between these two columns one by one, and we'll calculate the absolute difference in here, and then we'll take the average to calculate the MAE, which gives us 0 0.46. And to calculate RMSE, we'll do the similar things. We will first compute the square of the distance between these two columns. For example, in the first row, the square of the difference between these two columns is 0 0.25. And we do this for all the other rows. And then we sum them up and take the average and take the, take the square root of the sum. And this will be our IMSE. And in this case, the IMSE is 0 0.75. And until now, we are using the MAE and RMSE to actually evaluate how accurately we can predict the ratings. But in practice, we actually couldn't care less um, about the actual ratings, especially the low rating items. This is because we usually want to 
predict only a ranked list of recommendations. Let's say that in the top end recommendation setting, we usually provide a length and recommendation list for each user and we'll examine the hit items or we can say the correct items in the recommendation list. For example, in this, recomm in this recommendation list, the recommender system provides five items and only three of them are correct items. So the target user actually only purchase or like three of the items. And in this case, we can then calculate a confusion matrix. Let's say that in, in this table here, we have the recommender system recommended five items and it got three of the items right. And, and this target user actually, it actually purchased seven items in total, but four, four of them is actually not covered by the recommender system. Now we can calculate the number of items that are recommended by the system, but, and, and they're actually right. And the number in this case is three. And this corresponds to the three items here. We can also calculate the number of items that are recommended by the recommended system, but are actually wrong. And the number here is two, which corresponds to the first item here and the fifth item here. And we call these the true positives, and we call this the false positive. And these two set of items combined together, they actually constitute a set of all recommended items. And similarly, we can also take a look at the number of items that are not recommended, but are actually right. And the number is four here. And this corresponds to the four items here. And these are the items that the, that the users like, but they are not covered by the recommender system. And these two sets of items combined together, they actually constitute a set of all good items. And after computing this confusion matrix, we can actually get two evaluation matrix. And one of them is precision. And precision is actually a measure of exactness. And it determines a fraction of relevant items retrieved out of all the items retrieved. For example, in the case of movie recommendation, this is gonna be the proportion of recommended movies that are actually good. And in this list, it will just, since the recommender system actually recommend five items and three of them are correct items, therefore the precision will be just three over five here. And we have the second metric, which is recall. And this is a more, more of a measure of completeness. And it, it measures how complete that our recommended list is. So it de determines the fraction of the relevant items retrieved out of all the relevant items. And in this case, our movie recommender system, it's gonna be the proportion of all good movies recommended. Let's say that in this, in this table, the recommender system recommend five items, three of them are correct, but actually this target user he or she likes seven items in total. Therefore, the recall would be just three over seven, which is here. And until now, we have talked about precision and, and recall. And typically, when I recommend a system is to, to increase the precision, then the recall will decrease as a result, or vice versa. For example, if we recommend a lot of items, then the recall will be very high. But correspondingly, the precision may be very small. In an extreme case, you can recommend all the items to the user, then the recall of the recommender system will be just 100%. But your precision will be extremely low. And we have this F1 measure, which tries to combine precision and recall into a single value for comparison purposes. Basically, this is just the harmonic mean of precision and recall. And this may be used to gain a more balanced view of the performance. 
And as you may have expected, the optimal value for the SF1 measure is one. And until now, we only talk about precision recall and F1. And you may have noticed that all these metrics, they actually have a common problem. And the problem is it actually ignores the rank position of the recommended items. Let's say that for a user, we have these two correct items, item 237 and item 899. And let's take a look at these two recommendation lists. Apparently, the second list is better. Why? This is because the second list actually rank one of the correct items, which is 237 at the top of the list. And if we only take, if we only look at the precision of recall, the numbers are actually the same. And this is why we need rank matrix, which actually extend recall and precision to take the positions of correct items in a rank list into account. So again, the relevant items are more useful when they appear earlier in the recommendation list, like here. And this is actually particularly important in recommender systems as lower ranked items may often be overlooked by the users. So what kind of rank metrics can we use? One of the most famous one is the NDCG or normalized discounted cumulative gain. And to calculate this NDCG, we need to first calculate the DCG, which is discounted cumulative gain. And we can calculate it using the equation below. And here it's simply a sum of P terms. And the I here actually indexes the position. And we can see that and the P denotes the position after which the relevance is accumulated. Uh, let's say that, for example, the P in this rank list, we can set to five. And, and real I, this one is actually, you can, you can say that it's binary or you can use other scale. It actually returns the relevance of the recommendation at position one. For example, in, in, this, in this recommended list, the relevance of the position one is actually zero. Therefore, the DCG, the first term of this DCG is actually zero over log two, which is also zero. And similarly, the second term of this DCG, since this is a correct item, therefore the numerator will be just one. And the denominator, since it's in the second position, the denominator will be log i plus one, which is log three here. And similarly, we can calculate it. We can calculate all the other terms and we sum them up. And this will be DC, will be the DCG. And this is the first step. The second step is that we need to compute the ideal DCG or the ideal discounted cumulative gain. And this ideal DCG is, is just the DCG when all the items are ordered by the ground truth decreasing relevance. So this, this would be uh, the largest you can get if your recommender system is perfect. And once we have the DCG and ideal DCG, we can simply compute the MDCG by dividing the DCG with the IDCG. For example, Let's say that the number of total correct items is three. Then we can first calculate the DCG of this recommended list. And remember that we have this, we have only three non-zero terms. The first term is zero, therefore we ignore it. And the second term, the numerator is one because the relevance is positive. And since it's in the second position, the denominator is just log one plus two, which is log three. And in this case, the, the DCG for this recommendation list is 1.56. And then we will compute the ideal DCG, which is the ideal DCG of this recommended list. And this ideal list gives us a DCG of 2.13. Therefore, the DC, NDCG is the DCG divided by the NDCG, which is 
zero point seven three. And another rank metric, which is also very famous, is the mean average precision. And it's a rank precision metric that places emphasis on highly ranked correct traditions or correct hits. So essentially, this is just the average of precision values determined after each successful prediction. For example, let's say that we have still this uh, recommendation list and the average precision for this list is the average of three precision values. And the first precision values will be the precision for these two, for these two terms. We can see that if we only look at these two terms, then it has one correct and, and, and one incorrect uh, for the precision up to here is one over two. And the second term is the precision up to the third precision up to the third position, which is actually two over three. And similarly, we can have the precision up to the position four, which gives us three over four. And then we take the average, and this will be the average precision. And similarly, if we have a, another recommendation list, which is laid down here, then we can also calculate that average precision, which is 0 0.7. We can see that the average precision of this list is actually higher than this list. Why? This is because in this list, we get the first rank items correct. And remember that we're actually placing more, placing more emphasis on the highly ranked correct predictions, right? So this is very intuitive. So these are the average precision. So what's the mean average precision? Because this is only one, one recommendation, this for one user. And the mean average precision is just the mean of all the average precision for all the users.